Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. And uh, thank you all so much for uh, being here to help us uh, launch the new books out from Omnidon, which is always a cause for celebration. Uh, today, we have new books by Kimberly Reyes and Di Bogue Hardigan, Craig Santos Perez, Walter Ancaro, Anthony Cody, Ruth Ellen Coker, and Patty McCarthy. It is uh, an abundance of wealth that we have gathered here today. And I ask that you please show them some love in the chat and do a little dance uh, wherever you are. My name is Evan. I'm the events manager for Booksmith. We are an independent bookstore and a mainstay of San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district since 1976. I want to welcome the authors, um, Kimberly and I. Craig um, isn't here um, today, but I think um, Rusty uh, Morrison, Omnidon's publisher, is going to be um, reading and saying some words for um, for Craig, um, Walter. Um, Anthony, Ruth, and Patty, uh, welcome and congratulations on your new books. And um, uh, without further ado, I think I'm going to uh, head over to the chat and try to help with any tech issues. You guys um, show some love for all the authors and I am going to um, fade out and turn it over to Patty. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Booksmith. Thank you, Omnidon, Rusty, all my fellow readers. And I'm so excited to um, hear you all read, um, and uh, I'm not going to read but for 10 whole minutes, um, and then I'm going to get to sit back and relax and uh, and listen to everybody else. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to just read one poem from my chapbook that's forthcoming from Amidon. It opens with a quotation, actually, from J.A. Um, Baker's book, The Peregrine, and there's another sentence in the poem from that book as well, um, but just, you know, to give credit um, to uh, reading about falconry um, when, I was, uh, when I was writing this poem. Um, and it's called Untitled Yuletide, even though it's summer. Um, Untitled Yuletide. On the East Coast in winter, above or below the tide line, one walks in water or in mud. There is no dry land. Clam holes in mud and sand, why not? Look to that, like the sky. Winter fishery. Tradition says the clams are common property and the flats unleasable. Birds try and fail to gyre, at least for a while. The middle of the water is a window. The sky spangled with crows, a night body of water. Serrated rack, saw rack, tooth rack, dulse spiraled tidy into a whole universe. Ladder rack is a cunt in the granite. Textured, uncertain drift lines. Things aren't always so conscientious as to draw their soft edges for us. We move singularly like a liquid, soft shallows. What if instead of horizon lines, we read low drain tides, boats soft to ground, the middle literal sugar kelp woven. I will never have enough, I say to your sleeping, inscrutable shape, snow on snow, snow on snow, fallow waves. Find your V, goose, whirl the fuck up. Warm winter windows, ladybugs on them, oyster comma, oyster ear, half a conch crown, clam fan light. My oldest hears sounds that I cannot, including the sky. The sky keeps bright eyes on us. We look up into the cold. The tide makes a friction like a song in glass. That is, the tide sings when it spins in glass. So deep midwinter, the light turns iron. There is no end to your tongue. At this time of a winter's day, one can see the light turn and begin to flake and burn. And while it's a turn, I always notice something far away changes key. There is no perfect line except the rock line, which is infallible. It's too cold to do anything complicated. Come to bed, come to bed, come to bed. In marginalia season, a hawkless salt, salt hag. The tide adds or subtracts a causeway, a lightning line between the deeper blues. And though I look with adoration at these lines for hours, nothing comes back to me. A sea struck grid of skies, a whole year, more skies than days. In five days, I saw at least 60 skies. Gray wool, broken orange glass, burning, oyster shell, gray cool, Boy full, clearing blue, mirror calm, 
gentle cloud commas, world up storm waves, calendar of salt and tides and birds scything the full sky. It took me so long to write this that it's over, but that's the way with everything we say in unison with briny tongues tied me over. If you put something in a circle, you know people want to cross it. I don't even know what's good anymore. I only know what makes a pause, even the smallest stop in the relentless present tense. Weary so water to war, weary as water on the shore. The ocean told us how we felt and who were we to argue. Thank you so, so very much. Uh, I think I'm up next, um, so I'm just gonna go straight into it. Um, I'm gonna start this with a poetry film. Um, I have some films that are linked by QR codes inside my book. Um, and so I'll let that sort of do the talking for me um, as my first poem. I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully you can all see. If you respect the dead and recall where they died, by this time tomorrow, there will be nowhere to walk. Katie Ford. In Journey from Grandmother's Grave. There. Clipped, terrified. Rhyme reforests. Branch claws brazing. Liminal glass scraping. Thin hours, 11 on I-95, careening coast, ivory stroked asphalt, Doppler shifting the course. Rear view kinder tracks. Rank, exhaust. Salted fog miring. Green book guided memorial. Overtire. Open books of harbor. South Carolina is hailing. Scourged babies. Who are the living? Five points. 290 Broadway, Seneca Falls. New York only second to Charleston. Clawed auction, wet markets, an infestation, diseased greed, stunted seedling. Weeds. A 
our windshield collects. Witching hour do. Sideswiping back. Ports of call and subsurface cargo. Here, there's a crying blue child in cold. I can only hear. keep sharing my screen to transition to the next poem. Um, and this one is called Paradise is Tender. Um, and it was inspired by a particularly horrific fire season when I was living in San Francisco. Um, and also inspired by the very combustible politics of the Bay Area. I mean, you just travel 45 minutes out of San Francisco in any direction and you see sort of like farmers for Trump flags. And um, this poem is sort of, uh, addressing both of those topics. Um, and it starts with a quote from The Guardian. Soon at least 86 people would be dead in a new and ferocious kind of climate ch change inflected wildfire. And paradise would suffer a fate that appears increasingly likely, the total destruction of a modern American city. The lined white stalks of the Silverado Trail aren't graves as much as flyers, the fire sale in paradise. Crimson black grapes hang taut before the harvesting flame, coughing celestial particles of one another. Caked windshields, ashed arm hair. We could be carrying persons, deer, inhaling fear all the way down in San Francisco. A milieu of haze, indifference. At least 86 cindered hands, some used to cast the vote for the 45th, pull the lever from the root, their own prescribed fires. That's their story about how to squelch, about how wine is made on plantations, about how red and ripe farm country is, has always been, especially on coastal plains. Here's what's true. Winemaking is a cruel horticulture. You must sanitize the grapes, their sediment, first removing the stem. The remains to ferment, foreign neglect, chambered cool. Preserving a whiteness is avoiding any touch of skin, a palate cleanse. Then the stomping, conversion, a bashing on pillage land, a new sick, a bleeding through a royal blue and bone white linen. Can you taste it? The land is ripe, the land is bitter, the land needs to burn as we anesthetize time and tinder, bottling up consequence. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dai. That was so stunning, Kimberly and Patty. Thank you. Um, and huge thanks to everyone at Omnidon, to Rusty and Laura. I could not be um, more grateful for um, being part of this press. I'm going to uh, dive into kind of right smack in the middle of Ulrich at O'Clock. There are some different forms, our entries and second entries, and um, I'll just kind of stream between them, give you a sense of things. This first one is an our entry, and it has a name in it. Frederick Winslow Taylor, he was a um, late 19th century, early 20th century uh, 
mechanical engineer who did these time motion studies of industrial of factory workers in an effort to improve their efficiency so um and had a lot of influence so he's um part of this legacy of capitalist legacy of time management the poem is called our entry start the stopwatch the animal was a light fixture no the animal was a shovel start the stopwatch the animal was a light fixture. No, the animal was a shovel. No, the animal was the industry of pocket watches and light fixtures and shovels. The animal was Frederick Winslow Taylor performing industrial time studies of other men in a factory shoveling. The animal crawled into the people and they crawled into the animal daily. The people and the animal go home to actual animals, Labradors and Kool-Aid colored parakeets and heartful children and their hearts are soft as oysters, soft as suture leaks, soft as lost time, forgotten weeks. Stop. Start the stopwatch. There was light in the factory late, late, and Frederick Winslow Taylor held a stopwatch in the late 20th century factory light. Frederick Winslow Taylor held a stopwatch and started and stopped it to men shoveling to arrive at the most efficient method to industrialize factory time. The privilege to crawl into the animal was an economic privilege to hold the industry of light or time in the animal shoveling. The stopwatch had a mechanical heart and it was more dependable than any palpitation it cut through. But this is only where the study starts because the animals turn inside out daily and emerged from stopwatch cocoons. The moths flutter into light as faux home. Children can be depended upon to have their own clocks. Frederick Winslow Taylor could be depended on to appear looking backward as a heart made of cuttlefish bone. The parakeets pecking cuttlefish bone appeared to peck at pale hearts and the pecking kept their beaks sharp. Stop. Second entries, New Year's baby. New Year's baby. First before first, quiver lip sundial, continuity tipped, restart sun drip. I said I'd call, did, 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 reforge forward, cord and cry lit. Our entry this noon, this noon is your noon decisively. Before we had standard times, we had regional times generally agreed to by the commerce of a railroad line. Noon means noon so that we can walk in space and time and sell each other steam machines and huckleberry jam. I drained too realistically of my own death and woke damp and spooked. No one agrees on the time of their death. We agree on this. I dreamed I walked till noon wore off. I disagree with my dream, but I want my feet to keep moving in the moss softness of it our entry. This noon is your noon. This noon is your noon. Decisively, I disagree with my noon on the basis that I call it mine. Uh, there are a number of these poems in this book that um, uh, are kind of reckoning with um, mass shootings and and the um, impossible um impossibility of understanding kind of time sense with them um this is one written in that wake it's called the longest hour is the shortest the longest hour is the shortest too where you are merely an eye and time circle construction in the longest hour, there was wet and petal, fiddle panic, another American number. Unimaginable shootings occurred every several days and the hour absorbed them. The longest hour, a crack in time, large, larger headlines. The longest hour, a nesting doll in which smaller hours arose out of the flowered tight belly of the hour with complete specific lives. Whose thin skin nestership, whose sister, whose license absorb, I can't. I can't remember the hour exactly, only hours that nested in or from it. Whose headline ligature, petal wrinkled, last word, word. I cling to absorb what I hadn't heard. 
how I can admire the ant's industry, the mop its root industriously, what an hour is to an ant, what a second is to an automatic weapon, X dead, nine dead, shooter dead, nauseous reading, what grief is through a list, what an hour is to God's kiss, miscounted at first. The longest hour made headlines into eruptions, made strangers into cousins. May we love all strangers more. Hello, wet nasturtium, large, larger headlines. Second entries, fiddle panic. Fiddle panic, silent tent, agony points. Gingerbread joint. Our entry, can the clock burn? Can the clock burn? Why can't the clock burn? It is accustomed to flame anyway. It is the tooth of the flame anyway. Why can't the tooth burn? It does not burn because even if it burns, it is embodied in effective rotations. Nasturtium's prayer wilt anyway. People live so close to all they may lose any second anyway. But can the clock burn? This is not about a clock at all, but what the clock surrounds. The clock as a moat. The clock is a moat of charred clock parts, arbors, pivots, pinions, escape wheels. I'm talking about the instruments of promises and satellites and deadlines and rants and all one circles talking to oneself, sensing burn. I'm talking about the measure around the unmeasured, the center of the nebula that fails to hold or holds excessively. The clock surrounds a fiery center, a foliage of flame, clockless. It's Sunday. And I'm writing my heart out to get free of the clock. It's the noonish center of Sunday, and P is knocking around the kitchen beside me. Second entry is pothole hotline. Pothole hotline, anticipate coral. Automation nation, pinpoint prayer joint. Almost there, fear abacus, golden torn, maternal Copernicus. I'm just gonna end with one short hour entry. Our entry, all bells must hold all clocks. The clock's etymological root being cloca, being bell, a nerve root, shivering roundness, a medieval prayer alarm, a cradling sound shell. The bell is striking into the temporal, then a tide pool retraction, the bell an oscillating fraction of the friction of continuance, pulling water instants out and out and out. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Amidon. Hi. I'm going to read from my book. Um, thank you, Rusty and Laura, for dealing with me. Thank you, um, John Yao, for selecting my book for publication. Thank you, most of all, to Peter for designing the cover and for being my muse and everything else. Um, OK. I'm outside because it's really hot inside, but hopefully it won't be too loud. Avocado, aguacate, avocado. Spanish Diablo, Italian Diavolo, English Devil, French Diable, Romanian Diablo, Portuguese Diablo, all from Latin Diabolus. They speak in tongues said the monoblot evangelical, drive them out of this land. In Arabic, the word uh, Sahra means desert. A pilgrim on his way to Lake Chad will think the oasis a double mirage, for its name comes from Kanori Chada, meaning lake. On the edge of this lake, lake, at the end of the desert, desert, he stands with his body twinned in the water and wonders which of him is the word and which the object. The songs of the bathers, the lanterns making glyphs of the far shore, a pink conch shard whose curve suggests the whole. 
these call out to him. And by their pool in his heart, he knows the standing him is the word and that the object to which all he refers is his reflected self, the one so easily scattered. I would tell you of my home, said the adult, but what I call it now is called Ham in the past and Hamaz before that and earlier a name held secret. We live between impermanences of language. Building a home is settling on translation. Onion. From Old French, onion, from Latin, unionum, meaning unity, one. It is when cut deeply that you learn what you thought was depth, was mere repetition of surface, each clear pane of yourself opening to another exactly the same, out of which you will never view the real thing stark in the cold air. You, who are wholly unoriginal, that cut this cause of your tears. Um, I usually live in New York City, so I wrote a poem about living there. Forest, brave the five burrows in search of a bagel and its legendary center. In Williamsburg, they speak of Yiddish origins, bagel, after an antique bugle, meaning ring, while Western heresiarchs counter that it was forged in Hell's Kitchen. Natives of Alphabet City only say, oh, and point to a bodega. The markets are of little use. Amid ziggurats of spice, men rave cryptically of an almighty everything. In Turtle Bay, they confuse tortoise with Taurus. The jewelers of Midtown warn of a curse. The bagel center cannot be unbezeled without breaking its ring. The gluttonous, desiring the possibilities of empty space, devour the enclosing solid. Its missing center falls out, lost as a void among voids. I'm not going to read that one. Um, uh, the next one is a, uh, a dialogue poem between um, Mansur el Halaj, who was a ninth century Sufi poet, and Allah, whom you may have heard of. Um, Mansur el Halaj. O oh, eternal one, how did you begin? Allah. Mansur el Halaj, O oh, answerer, I understand. Your origin is the space between what is definite, al, meaning the, and what can be named, illa, meaning God, al, illa. By closing that gap, do we come to know you as you? In the synagogue of the Logos, a rabbi entered the Geniza, those sacred texts containing his unutterable name. In a distant land, a book grew out of Proto-Germanic bookas, the beech tree. In burying what is unsayable, we allow it to take root and then tower over us. Um, in the next one, I the like first line, the written like haiku, and the first line is an anagram of the second, of the third, I mean. Origami, from Japanese oru to fold, and kami, paper. Forgo the notepad for the lily, O frog. Malign form is grounded in flatness. A flap uplifts Mr. Flamingo. Of sex, one enfolds breath in craft, notice in the snow, boxes. A sawn self, ice sheets break a mirror lake, howled, a swan. Arcane, 
how the mind foresees in pleats of rain a crane. Um, I'm going to read three more. Taboo, from Tongan, the sacred, from Proto-Polynesian, not to be touched and spread by unspeakable acts around the world. An ambiguous Niz in Missoula. This is like, I guess if I had like a Pride Month poem, this is okay. An ambiguous Niz in Missoula, an aerialaholic from Brest, a prodder of cattle from Moolah, a swarm of bug chasers from Pesht, a man with bed sores in Mansoura, an omphalophile from Omsk, a Walid kebabbed in Gomorrah, a dick with his hairy in Tomsk, a chai boy big spooned in Lashkarga, a Zoro Asman from Tehran, a chubby chasey in Shahar Ga, a wap with a wap in Milan, a black tie affair in Wang Phuket. Admit what you did in Nantucket. And then I will read. The mind that shapes the bumblebee's name out of onomatopoeic bombolin is in turn shaped by the name of the bumblebee, which comes to evoke in the mind afternoons of Anab i Shahi and beards entangled, his scent now as distant as the summer it sowed, ripe years in which we could not tell the bee from the bumble and to which the bumblebee, in its briefness, paid no mind. Um, I usually finish with a different poem, but the other day I was in Kairouan, so I will finish with the poem about Kairouan. Caravan from Arabic El Kairouan, the westernmost city of Islam. In its madrasa lies an atlas, of lands beyond, a semic, incomprehensible, blank. Thoughts are the borders of words. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. I'm honored to be here in Fresno, the traditional lands of the Yokuts and Mono people. I pay my respects to the natives of this land and the ancestors of this land that have continued to care for it and allow us to be here today. I'm really excited to be here with my fellow spring authors at Omnidon, Kimberly, Walter, Patty, and I. Um, Ruth, Craig, not here yet, but um, grateful to be here amongst the constellation of all the writers of Omnidon. Um, thankful for Rusty and Laura and all of the Omnidoners out there that continue to help push us and propel us forward, um, despite all the difficulties of a very hard publishing season um, and the loss of Ken. So I uh, just want to say that um, thank you so much for helping shepherd all these books into the world, Rusty. Um, I'm going to dive into my new collection, uh, The Rendering, artwork by Phil Chang. I'm honored to have him grace the cover uh, with his artwork. But, but more importantly, one of the things that drew me to the work was sort of its process of taking things that were discarded laser jet printer ink and making new work. Um, these are the kind of strategies and seeings that sort of encompass some of the rendering, which chronicles the Dust Bowl, climate collapse, annihilation, and future, um, kind of make do to create something bigger um, to survive um, and hopefully thrive. I'm going to read a few poems, and I'm just going to dive right in. I'm going to start uh, by sharing my screen. Um, this is the first poem. Cada día más cerca del fin del mundo, every day closer to the end of the world. In the scrolling, witness a logging machine annihilate a tree into parts. This is social media. 20 seconds, a buzzing fells strips apportions the once breathing into a quiet slumber. Echo amplification in the ribcage affixed his crown in the fence coffin light of kindling, understanding the mechanisms of production, know the automated is never of scarcity, but of mass replication, acres never seized or ceased. 
my tongue slips into the mind gulp desert forest jungle cleaved into the flatness of the fableless not a single trunk will fuel fossil outcome transmittal horizon fuel fossil land choking no left fuel fossil atmospheric debris logic deprivation outcome stone institutional silent pile outcome effluent well failure unfavorable transmittal levels pre-industrial above 1.5 degrees centigrade transmittal visible denial epic monitoring horizon error kernel outwork corpus horizon fall plume obliterate wholeness where will whale? What was bird? Where forest? What ocean? Where living air? This next poem is actually part of a series of 15 poems I wrote in 15 days around the archive of both Dorothea Lang and the Dust Bowl archive. Um, so every night I'd go to bed around one of the images or pieces of archival material, I'd wake up and I'd draft a poem. This is the second of the series, Everywhere I Sleep I See Dust Bowl 2.0, with Dorothea Lang's photo between Tulare and Fresno on US 99, highway, gas tanks, and signboard approaching town, see General Caption, 1939. Somewhere in the Bible, it says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and I know what that means. I'm Catholic, and in the empire, ownership is in the taking, in the removal, in the signage along a sleeping highway, and tankers of gasoline. In the dream, I walk into the bank and ask for a loan to buy a house. I wear a tie. I don't own a tie. I don't know how to tie a tie. When I tie a tie, I search the internet. This is how the man asks me of my assets, a query sheet in which I list nothing and know so little in finance to say that the man begins speaking in a dead language. All I know is how all I know is how no, I know no, ma no matter tongue, I will not answer him in the affirmative. Waking or sleeping, the subconscious knows this is not my road. The man eventually stops talking and moves his head. His head tells me the answer is in the negative. In my dreams, I know I cannot ask. Awake, I ask the internet the number of banks and the internet provides an answer, 4,600 branches, an expansion of 931.17% since 1939, and unable to apportion bank ownership beyond 100%, to own permanence, a perpetual construct I cannot fashion, a pie chart depicting 1,000%, 1,000%, this is the effort my grandfather exerted to remember his grandkids' names, how he ran through real and invented names like the soil, unfamiliar in the mouth until swallowed by a dust storm at lunch, a sudden ownership of the light beyond the harvest. This next poem was actually a poem that was commissioned um, by magma poetry journal in the in the uk and they asked me to write a poem in response to a poem that's inspired me and that poem was jaguar by francisco x alacon this poem is in conversation with that poem but also in conversation with a form that juan felipe and i have been playing with in uh most throughout most of the pandemic that was partially also part of that first poem um an infinite poem with a center line that can spill both upward and root downward and be read across if need be to. Analog Jaguar Digitalization Forest Canopy. Jaguar, 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 Cage, 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 Jaguar, Jaguar, Cage, 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 Jaguar, Cage, 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 Jaguar, Cage, 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 Cage Jaguar, Jaguar, Cage, Cage, Cage Jaguar. Analog Jaguar Digitalization Forest Canopy. Analog Limb 
animal, the we stay, analog, server, algorithms, what has gone, jaguar, synaptic, marrow, stumbling, question ancient, jaguar crossing echo, steady ascending relic, digitalization trickles still damned, river autonomous, digitalization to tree ring applied heart palm, forest mimes, flits, drinks, J scrub, forest self inside last remaining saguaro. Canopy crumbles, jaguar, galaxy assumes data streams. Canopy sky, jaguar, earth, jaguar, particle, jaguar, 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 jaguar. Okay, so I'm gonna close up with one more poem. This is the final poem of the collection. Um, a lot of these poems are in the latter half of the book. I don't know where they come from. I don't know if they're communications from the pat from the, the distant future to the not so distant future. I don't know if they're from the future to now or what that means, but they kept happening. And this poem um, ended up being the final of that collect of this collection. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here with you all. Thank you for tuning in on your Sunday. Communique 1.30b, the ancestral progeny of Megtera Novangeli. Held you I once, beached, science corner incision, pressed index middle ring, wound and sob, spinal exposure column, say scientist disoriented mammalian blunt force wreckage, say internets, less sight tree. Once held I you, waves I washed, wish you home, wish you home, wish you home. Less relent, more ness restful, tell now, greater than, not equal to, greater than, not equal to, greater than, not equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, less than, not equal to. Lied man a once, less relent, more ness restful, all bu bucket boiled himself, all bucket boiled, all called okay all, all gone, less relent, more ness restful, all you. This be home, stop. Less relent, more ness restful. Be this home, stop. Less relent, more no ward home. This you held I, once I, begin you all. This ward sky, land home, nest restful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anthony, uh, um, and everyone. This has been wonderful so far. I'm I'm popping in for Ruth, um, who can't be here, but we wanted to uh, make sure that um, her her presence is here with us today. So um, I'm I, going. I I logged in. Oh, I, hey, Ruth. So hi, thanks so much, Evan. So I'll um, I'll just go ahead and show that film. I'll try to read maybe something, but thank you, everyone. I'm having some problems with my equipment here today. Um, but I'll read something short and then play this little uh, short film that I made of one of the long poems in the book. Okay. Um, the, this book is a gift from the universe. And Omnidon um, just kind of exploded that gift into many shards of light. And I, I feel really blessed. Um, to be received by them and the Omnidon family, who are some of the most wonderful people that I've worked with in publishing. So thank all of you. <clears throat> this is the opening poem in the book. I'm going to actually read the first few poems in order. It's Cosmogony. I begin with ocean floating in the free space of my ribs, somewhere between Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. I begin in Scorpio, a car ride into the city before Andromeda collided with the Milky Way another timeline ago. I begin as a cluster of muscadine grapes bursting bloody on their stems. I begin at the end, hungry, gorged on the ill-shaped stars which had 
not yet begun. I begin beaten by my own hands, a comet galaxy orbiting the parking lot of Stumbling Inn, Friday nights waiting for a wrong turn in the right car. I begin as a side bet, a detour into cosmos via the elliptical path of my thumbprint. I begin as Magellan's cloud hovering above a cartwheel galaxy before Magellan imagined himself. I begin as a call into the deep, deep, as a black eye begging my way into Medusa merger. I begin as something found and then lost, as a clutch, meaning a small group of mothers huddled around a baby, fever charged. I begin with nothing, no history, no moons. I imagine nothing, and nothing begins. How I am born. Three days before my mother dies, she says, I'm glad I kept you. Cephalogenesis. In November, a lie fertilizes an embryo. In December, panic begins. In January, her mother calls her whore. The northeastern sky is crisp, brutal. The trees are raked hands everywhere. In a very fine suit, Malcolm is gunned down. February has no mercy. The bullet tunnels a quantum path through the badlands behind time. March is bloody. Selma will never heal. July becomes my body becoming a terror. The school of a century splits in two. My mother tells me I am a god. I believe her. Lapsarian. The first god was stolen from her home, or her home was stolen from her. Her home is being stolen now since all time is the same. When I say body, I mean monster. When I say time, I mean land. I say we instead of cosmos, as in we embrace a fleshed affliction. When a god consumes a body, the body can only crave. Forget gods, think monsters, unhomed. We're the same. Thought of ways. In our contract as gods, we agree first to leave the everything we make to its own devices, meaning the fractal formed by an infinite system bumping up against the impossibility of logical conclusion, backwards into space-time weaving coastlines from the silt of our godly imaginations, which likewise fill a multi-dimensional nothing, 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 nothing and everything at once, which is also how love comes accidentally into being, not the human love, all love has now become, but the inner work of Godhead, that is, a love impossible to trace back to anybody, freely formed in the absence of trajectory, despite the incessant recursion of divide and thrash and divide again in the familiar pattern of a pine tree as viewed from above, which is very far away into the future, which is also how time comes accidentally into being not the lifespan we refuse ourselves, but the iteration of everything making and remaking itself as though somehow a system might ever become more than a morning where someone is packing and someone else waits in the bathroom, happy for an eventual leaving. Or the circuitous wind sweeps fallen leaves into an exiting path or the standard method whereby chaos becomes love circling back to augment the theory of being we imagined first 
as stasis, which is also how the body becomes not so accidentally a meta expression. Our syntax again of want, then want, then want again. Um. Okay, I'm going to um, share screen right now and finish up with this short film performance of the poem, The Last Gods. And if you want to read along with the poem, you can do that on the Poetry Foundation website under this poem. We were to Jones and his writing cold lace on old mind words. Like the words to find the subtle vibrations of verses. Railroad tracks, ribbing orange the sinking sun. What from my enters on feathers? What larvae? What souls? Like your name. Spine cloud, trying to find the pity. She was in love she with her guy who was in love with her best friend. She was one long, 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 long. She was quite like fucking sweet. sweet. He lived to be nice, but alive. No stars shine brighter than our bodies outlined by fire. There were two white girls and one black girl walking the neighborhood of another black girl. The neighborhood girl tells the new black girl, walk in front, not in back. Enters what enters unformed horizons break, not continuous, though you refuse to imagine anything. A cloaking theory whitens the sky when I finally arrive at my inner constitution. Is a that ends in death. And death, death, death is a field white with trees. We can see them. They are running, they are running with masks. They are running, they are running without masks. The street is, bound the street is bound in movement. The sirens, the sirens become a direction. The light is white in the background. The light near white almost. The sheet is white over his face. A white shard seeds me. I have, I have two arms instead of a hold. White girls down to run when it The ruins pop the island at the beginning and end of our romance. White girls wear his heels. Looks over the shoulder. He knows what she's done. White knows what she's done. I've been gone a long time. Each day is a room. The landscape only water and hills. If you widen your focus, we become a man. You can't distinguish your water from my water. Your water, your, your hills, your my hills. When I refuse to love the island, the sea turtles come. They get find them. We were going to change the world. He couldn't press charges. He was obviously unarmed. She does not pull over. The dead boy is everything for everyone. Everything means captive, after all. Clarity is not white. Clarity. Write this down and think I'm happy. Wanting light to be alive. It rains both inside and out. The world is genius and slow. I'm sitting here because of nothing you did. Please don't call me ugly. If you hunt, there is white beyond the canopy of leaves. If you are prey, there is red within the canopy of trees. Regardless, there is light of some dark dooming. A white boy calls a landscape my hip. He marbles me exotic. He watches the way. I write his name like mine. 
beyond something of shadows. A vase with roses holds the skull of a woman loved by every hand that touched her. Don't confuse a troubled flower for yellow sentiment. Pollination is a thoughtful sacrifice. What heart thump legions these still stars? What molten revolt adorns the walls? What color light enters? I'm feathered now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ruth. And um, uh, I think um, Rusty is uh, is going to uh, say some words for Craig and also for Rusty. <laughs> Take it over. Hi, Rusty. Great. I'll start with uh, speaking for Craig, who was not able to be here. Uh, he is outside of Zoom contact. Um, this is one poem from um, his book, which is from the series from unincorporated territory. And this one is titled from unincorporated territory Amat. What is hashtag Guam famous for? Did Magellan discover hashtag Guam in 1521? Was hashtag Guam the first Pacific Island colonized by Europeans? Was hashtag gone Guam an important stop on the Acu, excuse me, Acapulco Manila Galleon trade route. Did Spain own hashtag Guam? How many people died during the Spanish Chamorro War, 1668 to 1698? Is hashtag Guam Catholic? Was hashtag Guam annexed by the United States? after the Spanish-American War of 1898? Did the Supreme Court insular cases designate hashtag Guam an unincorporated territory? Is hashtag Guam home to indigenous Chamorro people? Are pure Chamorros extinct? Is hashtag Guam the tip of America's spear in Asia? Is hashtag Guam dangerous? Is hashtag Guam a target? Is hashtag Guam in danger? Is hashtag Guam America's westernmost frontier? Do Chamorans watch the Super Bowl on Monday, not Sunday? Is hashtag Guam the spam capital of the world? Is hashtag Guahan an edge? Tipping over? Capsizing? Is the whole world watching hashtag Guahan? Is Hashtag Guahan accustomed to being the center of global attention. Did hashtag Guahan change after it went viral? Is hashtag Guahan already forgotten? So uh, I'm so grateful to Craig for his work. And I'm so grateful to all of you. And now I'll say a little something. Uh, from me and from Omnidon. Uh, it is such a pleasure to hear all of you today and such an honor to be bringing your important books to readers as Omnidon, as our community. Uh, we are so grateful to be able to do that. And thank you to Booksmith and to Evan Karp, whose generosity knows no bounds. I'm grateful to each of you, Anthony, Craig, and I, Kimberly, Patty, Ruth Ellen, and Walter. Your books are unforgettable. Of course, every excellent book is unforgettable and unique in its own way. But I will risk saying that these seven titles from you do have a few things in common. Here are three. 
First, each of you use both form and content to question the prevailing limits of our culture in profound ways that I have been changed by. Second, each of you use surprising, captivating language to find the means to demonstrate how the protagonists of your, vo your books awaken to the limitations that they had accepted, but now see that they can abandon and live outside in a more choiceful and more free environment. In this way, you each offer that same opportunity to all of us. By reading your books, we can, I can perceive the limitations that I have been trapped within and move beyond them. Often it is your use of arresting sensory detail that gives us insight into your experiences, your pregnant, preg, preg, protagonist experience, rather than explaining them to us. We feel them as we read. We feel you. We feel the presence of your work and your, the power that you provide us as we read the details. They come alive for us. And I also want to say that you each offer an example of Omnidon's ethos, which is to explore what it means to step beyond the social and the personal boundaries that narrow our lives. You find the ways to give us compassionate insight, which allows our protagonists to take, excuse me, which allows us to take the same risks that you take, that your protagonists take. And I also want to say it is a privilege to be a co-publisher with Laura Joachimson. And I want to express how much Laura and I continue to miss Ken. We are also delighted to have a wonderful board and advisory board. And we are lucky to have the critical work of our volunteers and the work of those who receive a small compensation but they do so much more than more than that compensation could ever cover. They are Jeff Kingman, Jennifer Metzger, Jordan McKenzie, Katie Tomzinski, Rob Hendricks, Sophia Carr, which I read out in alpha order by their first names. And I want to acknowledge the poetry editors who receive a small stipend, but who do so much. Kimberly Rays will be joining us Rob and Laura are also editors, and so too is Anthony, who is here with us today. Jason Biani has been a constant stalwart. He's leaving us. Liza Flum and Sharon Zetter remain with us. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, congratulations, authors, on your new books. Um, everybody who has joined us today, uh, thank you for being with us. If you haven't um, already clicked through to get the books, I hope that you do uh, get them from Booksmith, get them from Omnidon Direct, just get them and uh, take care. Um, uh, I'm sure we'll see you uh, for the next Omnidon celebration. And uh, until then, I wish you all well and um, hope for the best. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.